Well, you just if you want to. I don't want to take it. Trying to keep the light. Dear Heavenly Father, Jesus and the sweet Holy Spirit, I just I thank you. I thank you for the opportunity that you have presented for my wife and I. That we were asked to come out here to bring forth your word, Lord, that you've put in our hearts. And I thank you for my brother and sister that have opened up their house in this beautiful place in order for your message to be shared, not only tonight, but each and every time they gather here, Father. I thank you that this place is truly blessed. I thank you that your presence resides here. And I thank you, Father, that this message will be infused into each and every one in this yes. room tonight. Yes. They will be able to take this message yes. And duplicate it, Lord. You'll be able to share it wherever they go. I thank you that it'll be fresh manna, Father. And I take positional authority and dominion over this area. And I thank you, Father, for the link angels that are surrounding this place and this property. I command every attack and assignment on this ministry. And the families that are represented here to be dismantled and fall to the ground. I thank you, Father, for your Son's precious blood that is applied to each and every one of us. I thank you, Father, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath set me, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. I thank you for it, Father. And I thank you for each and every one in here, that they are here by you, not by chance, but they're brought here by you, sweet Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory, and I thank you again, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. <clears throat> the message that the Lord had put on my heart uh, to bring forth tonight is the, the end result or the fruit of mercy and forgiveness. Okay? I'm going to be speaking beginning in uh, Psalms. And I'm going to start in Psalms chapter 5. And as we go through the Psalms, um, David, there's various times, and there's two Psalms in particular that I'm going to uh, speak on, um, and that's Psalms 5, and it's going to start in verse 7 through 12. But as we go through, we're going to look at that David cries out, for the Lord to have a multitude of mercies upon him. Okay? And I'm going to start to read in 7. It says, But as for me, I will come into thine house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in the fear will I worship toward the holy temple. So he's coming into the multitude of mercies that the Lord has for him and the ones that he loves and that obey him because this is back in the law time. And as David cries out for his multitude of mercies, as you go down and see that he wants a vengeance brought upon the people that have brought harm to him or have desecrated his name or have shamed him 
or have done any, anything wrongful to him. And it says, Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is in open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongues. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out of the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. Okay? So basically, <clears throat> you see, and what I'm going to get toward uh, to this teaching is, is how in the Old Testament, especially when David, when we're speaking about him, is he wants the multitude of mercies, but yet he wants uh, vengeance to come upon his, his foes, okay? Mm -hmm. And as we jump into the New Testament, where I'm going to hit on a few scriptures here in just a minute, it goes into that forgiveness, that we're, we're not supposed to have harm come to our brothers and sisters. We're supposed to love them and forgive them mm -hmm. and want only the blessings no matter what they do to us. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's that lesson that I will continue to, to bring forth as I get into the New Testament. Okay, the other psalm I wanted to touch on was Psalm 69. Okay, and that is verse 13. Let's give a start. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I just did want to touch on a few things. But it says, But as for me, my prayer unto thee, O Lord, is an acceptable time. Okay, and it says, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Deliver me out of the muck and mire. And let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the, wa the water flood over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Hide not thy face. And so basically it keeps going on and on um, about don't, don't keep your multitude of mercies from me. And then he starts to ask again for to bring shame upon his enemies and to uh, bring that vengeance of of the Lord upon them that have wronged him and his family. So again, you know, the, the multitude of mercies, David is really just asking for himself. So you're looking at kind of a self thing here, not for your brother and sister as we learn on this side of the cross and what we're supposed to ask for. Okay? Now, as we, as we go into the New Testament, as we shift from the, the mercy into forgiveness, because they really go, are hand in hand, okay? Because you want mercy to be upon our brothers and sisters. But you also need forgiveness to come upon out of your heart for them, okay? In order for that mercy to truly flow, okay? Um, if you go to, to Luke 23, and it's going to be verse 34, is where it's going to come into. Okay. Luke 23, 34. Mm. Okay. That's okay. Come on in. It's good to see you. Okay, Luke 23, verse 34. This is where 